Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Elon, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, we, feel, we feel very privileged. We're excited to have you. Right, so I'm going to start with some questions, and then we're going to open it up. The, the, the two, um, currently the two leading centers for AI development are the San Francisco Bay Area and the, and the sort of London area. The, um, and there, there are many other places where it's being done, but those are the two leading areas. So I think if, um, you know, if, if, the, if the United States and the UK um, and, and China are um, sort of Aligned on on safety, that's all going to be a, a good thing. Because that's really that's where that's that's where the, the leadership is generally. Actually, it's interesting. You mentioned China there, so I, yeah. I took a decision to invite China to to summit over the last Very couple good. of days, and it was not an easy decision. A lot of people criticised me for it. At, you know, my view is if you're going to try. It's essential. When I was when I was in China earlier this year, the, my main subject of discussion with this, this the leadership in China was AI safety, and saying that this this is really something that they. They should care about, and um, they took it seriously, and and I'm, and, um, and you are too, which is which is great. Um, and having them here, I think, was essential. Really, if they if they if they're not participants, it's it's uh, pointless. It's pointless. Yeah, that's no. point, and, yeah. and that's one of the benefits I'm most excited about. Like when you look at the the landscape of things that you see as possible, what is it that you know you are yeah, particularly? I, but if you have a humanoid robot, it can it can basically chase you anywhere. So. I, I think we should have some kind of um, hardwired local cutoff um, that, you, that you can't update from the internet. <laughs> so anything that can be software updated from the internet obviously can be overridden. Um, but if you have a local sort of off switch um, where you perhaps say a keyword or something and then that puts the robot into a safe state, um, some kind of localized safe state ability, um, an off switch, you know, uh, where you don't have to get too close to the robot. I don't know. So we, 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 if we've got millions of these things going all over the place. We, you're, you're not selling it. Just, you know, like that. <laughs> no, I, I, I know. Um, I, I'm saying this is something we should be quite concerned about. Because um, if the robot can, follow, robot can follow you anywhere, then, you know, what if they just one day get a software update and they're not so friendly anymore? Um, then we've got a James Cameron movie on our hands. Um, <laughs> It, it's, it's actually, that's, it's funny you say that because we, in our session that we had today, uh, I, you know, just, I would say who, we, they made exactly the same point, right, Dennis, they were talking about, they talk about movies, and they, actually, without mentioning James Cameron, they were talking about James Cameron movies, <laughs> and, but they're saying, if you think about it, it's, it, it, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's not just those movies, but any of these movies, trains, subways, metros, cars, buses, <laughs> they said all these movies with the same plot fundamentally all end with the person turning it off. Right or finding a way yeah. to shut the thing down, and they were making the same point that that you were about the importance of actual physical off switches. Yeah, and so all the technology is great, but fundamentally, this same movie is played out 50 times. We've all watched it, and yeah. it all fundamentally, you know, you know, point I'm referring to, right? It all ends in pretty much the same way with someone finding a way to just yeah do the thing, at, um, which is kind of interesting that you said a similar point, right? Yeah, it's, it's probably not the it's not the obvious place you'd go to, but. It, Maybe that, it's still a concern, and you know, you, what would your kind of observation be on, on AI and the impact on labor markets and people's jobs, and how they should feel about that as they, as they think about this? Well, I think we are seeing the most disruptive force in history here. Um, you know, where we have for the first time, we will have for the first time something that is smarter than the smartest human. Um, and that, I mean, it's hard to say exactly what that moment is, but, but there will come a point where no job is needed. You can have a job if you want to have a job for sort of personal satisfaction, but the AI will be able to do everything. So I don't know if that makes people comfortable or uncomfortable. It, 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 <laughs> uh, you know, that's why, that's why I say if you, if, you, if you wish for a magic genie, <laughs> That gives you any wishes you want, and there's no limit. You don't have those three limits, three wish limit nonsense. Uh, you just have many, <laughs> as many wishes as you want. Um, so uh, it, it, it's both good and bad, um, and to do that on mass, and, and practically the only way you'll be able to tell is that the grammar is too good. <laughs> <laughs> Take away.